It's no secret that some incredibly unbelievable things are happening in the world that just don't make sense or seem legit. All sorts of shady stuff has been going on for years now, and a lot of the time administrative authorities and experts try to cover them up so that the public never finds out. Believe it or not, there's a lot scientists don't want us to find out. In today's video, we'll tell you all about some of the most unsettling things scientists don't want you to see, so make sure to watch till the end and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Real Story Behind Penicillin When Dr. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in 1928, he revolutionized the field of medicine. The St. Mary's Hospital bacteriologist went to Scotland for the summer. He returned to find his lab messy and noticed the petri dishes had been polluted by Penicillium notatum, a mold. When he examined a dish under the microscope, he was baffled to find that the mold had inhibited the growth of Staphylococci. Something inside the mold had stopped bacterial growth, and could be used to treat bacterial infections. Penicillin was the hero of the Second World War and saved many people from losing their lives because of infected wounds. The percentage of soldiers dying from wound infections went from 18% in World War I to just 1% in World War II. No wonder American pharmaceutical companies were manufacturing 650 billion units of penicillin by the time World War II had ended. Fought a bull with mind control Jose Manuel Rodriguez Delgado shocked everyone when he stood in a bullring holding a small metal box. He was wearing just a sweater and a tie. Suddenly, the bull turned and charged at him. The investigator stepped back and pressed a button on the box, sending a radio signal, and surprisingly, the bull stopped midway, turned around, and its aggressive demeanor changed. This behavior control demonstration occurred in 1963 in Spain. Delgado, who was a physiologist and scientific showman, considered it his signature experiment. He studied the ways a brain reacts to electrical stimuli. He rose to fame for eliciting different behaviors in his animal and human subjects using electricity. He even managed to control them and was criticized for it. Tusco, the elephant who was on LSD Tusco was an Asian bull elephant weighing around three tons. He was the subject of the biggest and most scandalous drug test in history. The experiment was conducted by Dr. Louis Jolin Jolie West and his two colleagues in 1962 at the University of Oklahoma. He wanted to see if the recreational drug LSD could make Tusco go into Massif, which is a period when a bull elephant's testosterone levels rise and its behavior becomes exceptionally aggressive. It happens naturally to bull elephants, but apparently the West was using it in the CIA's MK Ultra program that was testing LSD on people since 1953. Tusco was given 297 milligrams of LSD. As a result, just five minutes later, the poor animal fell over, defecated, and began violently shivering. He was even unable to breathe. Twenty minutes later, he was given Thorazine, an antipsychotic, which only made things worse. Eventually, he was given a tranquilizer, but that didn't help either, and he died a few minutes later. Two-Headed Dog Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov actually made a dog with two heads. He, along with his colleagues, attempted this surgery 23 times. They began doing this in 1954. The 24th attempt wasn't very successful, but it gained traction when the Times magazine wrote about it and shared photos of the dog. Demikov used a German shepherd and a smaller dog named Shavka. The German shepherd was to be the host dog, while Shavka provided the second neck and head. The operation lasted three hours, and when the two-headed dog was brought to life, both heads were able to see, hear, smell, and swallow. Unfortunately, the two-headed dog only lived for four days as opposed to the longest living dog from Demikov's experiment that lasted 29 days. The Conversion Experiment Two scientists from McGill University named James Old and Peter Milner discovered that the feel-good center of the human brain is located in the septal region in 1954. When stimulated by electricity, it causes a person to feel very happy and aroused. Robert Heath from Tulane University found a unique application for Alden Milner's discovery in 1970. He wanted to see if stimulating the septal region repeatedly would turn a gay man straight. He called his gay subject patient B19. He put Teflon-insulated electrodes in the septal regions of his brain and gave the poor man controlled amounts of stimuli. He later set up a way for the man to stimulate himself. The subject became addicted to the pleasure button, and in a single three-hour session, he pressed it 1,500 times. At this point, the sexual desire in the subject was extremely high, and Heath then introduced him to a willing female partner. 
pair eventually had a successful sexual encounter according to the experiment, although B-19 went back to being a homosexual. Fortunately, Heath never got a chance to do something like this to other homosexual people. Soviet scientist attaching a dead dog's dismembered head This terrifying video filmed in the 1940s shows a Soviet scientist installed a dead dog's decapitated head on a machine. He apparently brought it back to life, according to the film agency. The machine looks like it can move the blood around the brain and revive some of its basic motor functions in the brain. In the same video, the scientist used the same methods to revive a dog that has been dead for 10 minutes. The device was named Auto Ejector. It was made of two diaphragm pumps and a valve system operated manually. Wonder if they're still doing this sort of stuff. Harry Harlow Monkey Love Experiment Harry Harlow conducted several studies between the 50s and 60s. He studied how racist monkeys form bonds with each other. He took baby monkeys at birth and kept them isolated for three months to a year. He then put them back with other monkeys to see what would happen. The results were pretty unsettling and the monkey behaved quite strangely. The babies were initially scared of the others, but then the other monkeys became extremely mean. The babies would get picked on and even hurt themselves by pulling out their hair. They'd scratch and bite their own limbs. The female monkeys were put in a state of anxiety that made things difficult when they had babies. They'd smash the faces of the babies into the floor and rub it repeatedly. Using these cruel tests, Harlow concluded privation was incredibly harmful, at least in monkeys. The Milgram Shock Experiment Stanley Milgram was keen to figure out how willing the Germans were to follow orders. Participants of the experiment were paired up and lots were drawn to decide who would be the learner and who would be the teacher. The draw was set up in a way that the participant always became the teacher and an accomplice of Milgram became the student. The learner named Mr. Wallace would be put in a room with electrodes on his arms. The teacher would be sent to a room having a row of switches and shock generators marked from light to dangerously high shock levels that could be fatal. The teacher then tested the learner and when they made a mistake, the teacher was instructed to give him or her an electric shock. The shock got stronger with each mistake. The shocks weren't real, but the learners were good actors, so they pretended to be in pain quite well. Results showed that 65% of teachers were okay to keep going to the highest level of shock that was fatal, and all of them kept going until they reached an extremely painful level. This was a game-changing experiment that revealed how people think or how little they care about the sufferings and lives of others. Blood of young mice rejuvenates old mice Scientists studying mice have found that administering blood from young animals into old animals can reverse some signs of aging. The team discovered that a growth factor in young blood could be responsible for this effect, particularly on the cardiac tissue. This result was based on a series of studies conducted over a decade. Researchers sewed together the skins of the two mice to join their circulation and then observed how it affected all the body tissue. So now think that this same study could be applicable to humans too. UW professor learns crows don't forget a face. Bernd Heinrich is a professor at the University of Vermont. He's famous for his books on raven behavior. According to him, the crows can differentiate between human faces as a byproduct of their acuity. They possess an extraordinary ability to recognize each other even after staying apart for months. Some researchers wore rubber masks to see if the crows would recognize other features like clothes and gait. They wore a caveman mask to seem scary while a Dick Cheney mask was worn as a neutral face. Seven crows were then caught and branded at the Seattle University campus while wearing the dangerous mask. The researchers wore the same mask on the campus for the coming weeks but didn't bother the crows. But as it turns out, the crows still remembered the dangerous masked men. Mouse with human ear An unsettling photo became a hot topic in 1997. It depicted a hairless mouse and there was a human ear sticking out of its dorsal surface. It was probably grown for surgical transplant. This is done because the human ear is very difficult to repair as most of it is made of cartilage which is a difficult medium to work with. The shape of a human ear is also quite complicated. Joseph Vacanti and his colleagues published a paper that revolutionized the way people perceive plastic surgery. Progress in the field of growing new human body parts might be slow and strange, but masses have adapted to the idea and its benefits. Cloud of Microbes A US Navy ship off the coast of San Francisco sprayed a cloud of microbes into the city's air using a massive hose on the 20th of September 1950. The military wanted to know how the 800,000 residents of San Francisco would be affected in case of a biological attack. The residents had no idea about this and the test lasted seven days and caused at least one death. 
but who knows how many were covered up. The experiment was part of a germ warfare testing program that ran for 20 long years. CIA Mind Control Experiments When the Cold War began, the CIA thought the Soviets had formulated a drug they could use to control the minds of people. As a retaliation, the CIA started its own program called MK Ultra to find a similar drug. Sidney Gottlieb was a chemist who created the program and ran it between the 50s and 60s. It was one of the most sustained searches in history aimed at developing mind control techniques. However, Gottlieb eventually realized it was not possible to control the minds of people, but he had already destroyed the lives of all the test subjects. MK Ultra is considered one of the worst things the US government has done to their own people. Monster Study 22 orphan children having a stutter were used as subjects in a study called the Monster Study. It took place in Iowa back in 1939. It was created by Wendell Johnson and a graduate student named Mary Tudor, who conducted it under his watch. Half the subjects received positive speech therapy, while the other half negative speech therapy. As a result, several normal orphan children who received negative therapy suffered from terrifying psychological effects. Some even had trouble speaking for their entire lives. Johnson's colleagues and peers were shocked by his indifference and cruelty towards the children, and that's why the experiment was named Monster Study. Watson's Little Albert Experiment Two scientists named Watson and Raynor conducted this terrible experiment. They put on a rabbit and a money mask and burned newspapers in front of a nine-month-old baby named Albert. They documented his reactions to this. Initially, the boy wasn't scared of anything they showed him, but the next time Albert saw a rat, Watson hit a metal pipe that produced a loud noise and naturally the baby began crying. Albert was manipulated into associating the white rat with the noise repeatedly and soon enough just seeing the rat would make Albert cry. Poor child was given an unnecessary phobia of rats for life by two inconsiderate men. Nazi Medical Experiments It's no secret that Nazi Germany conducted inhumane medical experiments on a large number of prisoners. Even children were not spared. Romani, Sinti, ethnic Poles, Soviet prisoners of war, disabled Germans and the Jewish people from all over Europe were subjected to these experiments. Most of these were done without anesthesia and left thousands of people dead, disfigured or permanently disabled. Under the leadership of Edward Wirth, several prisoners were subject to experiments that were supposed to help German soldiers in battle make new weapons and propagate the Nazi ideology of racial purity and eugenics. The horrifying twin experiments of Joseph Mengel were also part of these medical atrocities. After the war ended, these crimes and their perpetrators were tried in the doctor's trials and the outrage over these crimes led to the creation of the Nuremberg Code of Medical Ethics. Before moving to number one on this list, take a look at this image. Jurassic Park is a cult favorite movie, but it's mostly fiction. Or is it? Turns out the Steven Spielberg film has inspired the Chinese to try dinosaur DNA and plan to set up an actual Jurassic Park. They've kept it a secret so far, but it will probably destroy the tourism industry in the rest of the world for sure. Would you visit it? Tell us in the comments. The Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment A charity called the Julius Rosenwald Fund initiated a public health project aimed to rid the black people of the rural American South in 1928 of syphilis. When the Great U.S. Depression hit the nation, the project was changed, and instead of curbing health problems in poor and underserved areas, the black men from Macon County, Alabama, were defrauded into enrolling into a program that would supposedly treat their bad blood. They were offered free medical care, food and other advantages in exchange for participation. But the men had no idea that they'd been chosen for the program because they had syphilis. They also had no idea they were becoming a part of the Tuskegee study, a government experiment to study untreated syphilis in African Americans. So the government lied to them. Participants of the study thought they were getting medical care, but reality was far from it. This means even when penicillin was established as the standard drug for rapidly treating syphilis in 1947, the experiment went on. The ethics of the study came under fire in 1936, but despite that, it continued until 1972. These were some of the most horrifying science experiments in human history. Do tell us in the comments section what you think about these. We'll be back soon with another mind-boggling video. Until then, have a great time.